right, we're going to catch some bluegills and bait some trout lines. And if we catch any big fish, we're going to put them in that and take them to my friend's pond. Let's do this. Okay, first day on the water this year. Been turkey hunting. I'm out of turkey hunting mode. This is the cricket hook. I think it's a number eight, maybe, or a ten. I can't remember. But um, I've used both sizes. The way you uh, bait these things is you take that hook and you bend it. And when you bend it like that, the fish can't swallow it. But there's enough hook to go in the mouth. It won't go all the way down in their throat, but it'll catch on their top of their mouth or just in their mouth. So I just take a little pinch of night crawler. Anyway, let me hook this on here real quick. Put it through about three times. Thread it through. That's at least two. I gotta pick these worms up. And then we're gonna go fishing. There he goes. Oh yeah, first big chunk of the year. They're in there. They're in there every year. <laughs> I'm like a kid in a candy store. People catch five pound bass get excited. I catch one of these big chunky bluegills and I'm happy. <laughs> Alright. Just trying to shove myself into the bank here, getting wedged. Swallowed. It hooks them. They push their fins back. Take it out. I don't know if I'm going to eat these. Sometimes I turn them loose in my friend's pond. When they're spawning, he's got a two acre pond that we've been stocked in the last few years. <coughs> there you go. Sometimes you get into it. Here we go. Oh yeah. Another darky. One of them big four-headed gills. Oh yeah. See, you can't swallow the hook. There you go. Use it hooks in the top of the mouth and just push it right out. Swallow it. Uh -oh. I think we might have a little nest here. When you throw it in and the, and the bobber goes down instantly, that usually means there's multiple fish because they're competing for it. It's just like the last biscuit, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a darky out of this whole one, anyway. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest one today. Golly. That is a big hand size on there. Right in the top of the mouth. Didn't swallow it. I ain't found beds yet. I found one. I went right over top of it and ruined it. So, okay, this is uh, how I tie a hook on. It's an improved clinch knot. Just t you just spin your hook about five times. Put it through the first loop. If the wind doesn't blow it off, put it through the first loop like that. Put it through the second loop, and that's called an approved clinch knot. I've used it for years. Just kind of cinch it down tight like that.
cut your tag off down to about a quarter of an inch. If there's any slippage, it'll catch, hopefully. Bleeding out their gills, they're done. All right, we got number 20. Oh, yeah. Well, we might have to go for 21 because I just still got my bait. Say, ah. Uh. Pop. 20. Will we get a bonus off this last piece of worm? To be determined. I'm trying to sling my bait off. Left one one hour one time. We got to smelling something and it stuck up the whole garage. One little piece of worm went rotten on the end of that hook. All right, let's go home. I'd call that a good day when you can't hardly see the bottom of your fish bucket. Yep. Time to put out some jugs. on here got all my delicious bluegills in there all right here we go Here's my setup. Put a wash on the end of it. And I got this hook here. And uh, when the if the doesn't get a fish on it, it just goes into the bank and it sits in about two feet of water. If you put the hook on the bottom, the fish can the bluegill can hide, get tangled up and stuff, but if it's in the middle, it holds up off, off the bottom. So lots of times you'll see people with the hook on the end and maybe a sinker in the middle or nothing. But uh, this is how I do it, and it works. Well, let's take one. Hook them right through the back of the scale here. Like that. And out they go. There you go. Start moving down the lake here and put them put them out about 20 feet apart or so. But they'll swim around. They get over into shallow water, and uh, hopefully to come back tomorrow and have some cats. All right, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I got 22 out. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Good morning. There you go. Alright, we caught a bunch of bluegill yesterday and loaded up our jugs last night. We're running jugs this morning to see what we can come up with. My goal is to catch one. 
see a few around. We got a lot of wind today. See some up against the bank. And hopefully we catch at least one fish today. Check them out. Here's an example of why you want weights on your, some people don't use weights, they just put hooks on them. Um, it keeps the float from going all the way into the shoreline and you can get it by boat a whole lot easier. That weight hits the bottom at two feet and that'll give you plenty of water depth to get in there and get it by boat. This is my design. I just wrap them up, put the hook in, wrap them up this way, and stick the sinker in the end. It's a nice big fat sinker and it goes right in there. It's bobbing a little bit, but it may just be hung up on a stump or something. We got some. That's a good sign. A little too hard on it. That must be a pretty good one. He's pulling it all the way under. Pull too hard that you might pull the hook off on him. Oh yeah. Oh, a big flathead. Not a real big one, but a pretty good one. Sweet. If he wants to take it, just let him take it. Because you don't want to rip that hook out of him. If he pulls out too hard, just let him have it. Fight him till he's wore down. If you try to horse him too much, he'll rip it out. Because you don't have a limber pole here. You just got to... You are ugly, but you sure are good to eat. We'll send them a pictures of my friends. Make them jealous. They're all working and I'm all because I'm retired. So we raced a goal. One. Uh-oh. Uh, that looks good. Sweet. He's going down again. There he goes again. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, he is yanking that thing down. Out of sight. Now he's out of the boat. This is part of it. I'll turn the camera back on. I want to get him in. <laughs> Is that a blue? Man, that has been a job. Whew. That's awesome. <laughs> well, he's hooked in the mouth. He ain't hooked in the throat. Golly, we're gonna smash into the shoreline. Let me get out here in the middle. Oh, and assess. All right. I win. Golly, he is barely hooked. I mean, barely hooked. Now he ain't hooked at all. Set up, got him. A woman, no orange on it. Great. He's about 26 inches, maybe. What is that? This is 24, 28. He's about 27 inches. Well, I'm back in here looking for jugs. And I come back this creek. Of course, I'm looking up against the shoreline. And I go over a honeycomb nest of bluegills. 
for future reference. I just ran them off, so probably no point in fishing them for them today, but let's see if we can look down the water. May not be able to see them from this angle. They're right here. Circles. Circles, yep. So, I'll be back. Welcome to your new home. There you go. You're out of here. Go, buddy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>